What's going on guys? Welcome to VOA's Red Carpet. My name is Jackson Vungani. I want to thank you for joining us today on the show. Now, like we always do, we bring you the latest in entertainment news, in sports, in film and television from around the world. Now let's start off with a little disclaimer. The show looks a little different because we are all working from home. COVID-19 is still very much with us and we're still under strict lockdown restrictions here in Washington DC area. And so are many of you who are watching this show, but lockdown or not, we still continue to cover the news. And with that said, let's get on with the show. Now, as the coronavirus continues to make an impact around the world, we've heard about stories of celebrities, musicians, uh, doctors, nurses, trying to put word out on some of the preventative measures to avoid the spread and infection of the coronavirus. Now, graffiti artists in Kenya are adding their voice to that. Let's go to Nairobi for that story. A six foot image of a sad eyed man, baseball cap a school, and face mask covering his nose and mouth is spray painted on a building in a Nairobi slum. Next to it, the words, Corona is real. There are six other pieces of graffiti like it around Mathare, the Kenyan capital's second largest slum. The graffiti campaign was started by Anthony Mwelu and Brian Musasia Wanyande to offer practical ways to protect yourself. One urges people to wash their hands, another to use mobile money rather than germ-ridden cash. Trying to sensitize guys is like even when you're doing your Buddha Buddha operation, it's good to, you know, we go, we move away from the cash system, we go towards uh, the mobile money. So. Anthony Mwelu was born and raised in the slum and says he realized he needed to do something after visiting the neighborhood. All the resources we use from this campaign, we, we, we get them from our own pocket, which is becoming a very big challenge because there are so many places in the slum where we can go and further put the message. Dozens of residents like Derek Odiambo are paying attention to the newly painted art, with some squinting into their smartphones to capture pictures. You can see there, they've told you that you should quarantine yourself, you should wash your hands with socks, and you stay at home and you quarantine yourself, because this this, this disease is very bad. It can kill you. And from Nairobi, we go up north in North Africa, the country of Tunisia, in the coastal town of Nabel, where one handball referee has gotten creative about getting people to respect social distancing rules. He's giving out cards, blue cards, red cards. If you're not respecting social distancing, you will get a card. Dressed in his handball referee uniform, 19-year-old Abdulhaq Atlili takes to the streets every day, passing by supermarkets, post offices, and food stands, communicating the dangers of coronavirus in the language he knows best. When I went out to the streets, uh, there were people who accepted what I was trying to do, while others did not. I didn't want to argue with people who did not respect social distancing rules, so I use my own way, the way used by referees, where I use yellow, red and blue cards. Although sometimes faced with negative reactions, Atlili's feedback was predominantly positive, as described by Tunisian Obid Allah Dakfus. The initiative presented by the handball referee is really great. It spreads awareness among people on social distancing because people are still not aware of the dangers of this virus. Organized video gaming is increasingly popular as people are locked down during this pandemic. VOS Michael O'Sullivan has our story about two esports competitors staying in training while staying at home. A remote practice requires concentration and teamwork. Esports is just as competitive and just as um, exhausting as any other sport. You, you're using your brain, you're communicating, you're, you're having uh, strategic plans, and the, it's, it's the same format as like baseball and stuff. And it's challenging like chess, says an eSports player who studies mathematics. He says the skills are similar. 
you can discuss like multiple ways to solve one to get to get like what the same answer. Esports is a billion dollar industry with professional teams and competitions that draw thousands of spectators who come to see the world's top gamers. The computer based sport also offers professional opportunities. Event planning, uh, logistics, uh, purchasing, the business side is a big side of it, accounting and finances. So um, we try to do an event where we try to integrate all those aspects into the whole esports event. When not locked down at home, pro players compete for trophies and prize money. At the college level, some get involved for enjoyment. So I was all right, let's just go for it. And next you know, I'm here, I'm making a lot more friends, and it's really fun just to be on a team. Some professional athletes are turning to esports in their time in isolation. It offers virtual competition without boundaries and does the same for student players. Essentially, we're able to compete with other people from across the world and get connected with other people that we wouldn't typically be able to meet in person, which is pretty neat if you ask me. Professional teams are getting involved in online gaming as the line between sports and esports starts to blur. And esports comes into its own in a time of pandemic. Mike O'Sullivan, VOA News, Los Angeles. So as many European countries start to ease lockdown restrictions, many soccer players are starting to contemplate going back to the field. How is that going to look like? Italian Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte says individual training can start May 4th, with players still respecting social distancing rules ahead of team training to resume May 18th. We will then have to assess if it will be possible to complete the championships that we had to suspend. At the moment, we have to continue our discussion to have a global picture of the situation. If we were able to conclude that, it will be possible to resume Serie A. We will do it guaranteeing maximum safety conditions because we are very passionate about sports, we love our players and we don't want them to get sick. For the start of training, each club will form a group of players, technical staff, doctors and physiotherapists will be tested and then isolated in a summer-style training camp. In London, Premier League club Arsenal has reopened its training ground to players for individual training, but says access will be limited and social distancing will be maintained at all times. Players will travel alone, do their individual workout and return home. As for soccer in Spain, Health Minister Salvador Illa says we are going to see how things evolve before we decide how different professions will resume activities. So just like many of us, celebrities around the world are spending time, this free time, indoors, either cooking, playing outside in the yard, or doing all these kind of different activities. Let's check in on how they're coping with these lockdowns. Go! Yeah. Naomi Campbell started a web series and keeps a structured schedule. Get up, pray, make my bed, shower, fitness clothes, Lay out my fitness stuff, my weights, my scroll, my mat. John Bon Jovi has been catching up on an old to-do list. You know, you're getting to know yourself pretty well. You know, you catch up on all those things like cleaning your closet and reading a book. But, you know, like everyone else, you're trying to do the right thing, and the right thing is to stay in. Singer Kelly Rowland has been cherishing time with family. Trying to bake. Um, I have been with my son a lot. Um, we have bonded, bonded in, in such a way where I just feel like this was time for me with him and my husband, for us to just have this time together to just see each other. And the important message, no matter what the day holds, celebrities are remembering to be kind to themselves. I treat myself, I either have some cookies, gluten-free cookies, or I've got a whole stash of English chocolate, meaning flakes, caramels, Twixes, um, galaxy bars, <laughs> um, dairy milk chocolate. So that's my little treat at night. A 
People stuck at home will have some new videos to watch online. Disney Plus is showing the new Star Wars movie starting May 4th. The feeling. The Force brought us together. We're not alone. Good people will fight if we lead them. And that... Actor Pedro Hossi plays Timorese freedom fighter Zanana Guzmao in Sergio, the new Netflix film oh, about Mr. Brazilian diplomat Sergio Vieira de Mello, who was killed in a Baghdad bombing in 2003. Hossi told Red Carpet's Myla de la Salette that this film brings to light the life and work of someone who put, quote, his heart into everything that he did. Yeah, well, you know, first of all, I think movies like this uh, should be watched uh, because of the narrative. Uh, it's important to understand what guys like Sergio Vieira de Melo did and, and, and the work they developed and the way they put their heart into uh, uh, what was uh, his passion and his work. Um, and, and for me, you know, it was... Uh, uh, it, it was a really good experience because I was surrounded by uh, super talented people, people that I highly respect, um, telling the story of, of these characters, you know. It was amazing. Um, and also a movie that tells a beautiful love story uh, between two, two people, like, and, 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 and if you pay attention, Sergio Vitted Melo, he, it, it, it comes across like he had decided to settle, found his woman, and he died. So there's also a message here that, you know, yeah, don't, don't wait, right? Like, um, be fully engaged in the process of, uh, of living. And we end our show with the South African dance, Pata Pata revived with new lyrics to help spread information about the coronavirus to vulnerable communities. Meaning touch touch in the Kosa language, Pata Pata was written by the late South African icon Miriam Makemba, who named it after a popular Johannesburg dance move. Now the new version sung by Beninese artist Angelique Kijo includes lyrics such as, we need to keep our hands clean, so no Pata Pata. Don't touch your face, keep distance please, and no pata pata. Pata pata means to touch and to feel, which we shouldn't do. It has always been called the world's most defiantly joyful song because it represented Riverly under apartheid South Africa. Makemba helped popularize African music worldwide and was a mentor to Kijo who is re-releasing the song as a UNICEF goodwill ambassador with the dedication to the Cameroonian star Manu Dibango, who died of coronavirus. Manu inspired me, Miriam inspired me, and Pata Pata gave me hope, Kido said in a statement. Pata Pata has always been there for people at a time of struggle. I hope from our confined spaces, we can dance once more. And with that, we come to the end of our show today. My name is Jackson Vungani. Thank you for joining us today. For more entertainment news, check us out at voanews.com. Connect with us on our social media platforms. We are on Instagram, on Facebook, and on YouTube, where you can watch our videos, like, and subscribe. Until next time, be healthy, stay safe, and socially distance. Stay at home. Goodbye. Uh -huh.